Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am VC Pramod with the news at 9. The headlines. Girish Chandra Murmu appointed as Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir and RK Mathur as Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh. Satyapal Malik to be new Goa Governor. Political activities for government formation gain momentum in Haryana and Maharashtra. Haryana BJP legislature party to meet in Chandigarh tomorrow to elect its leader. Army Chief General Bipin Rawat asserts POK illegally occupied by Pakistan but actually controlled by terrorists. Advisor to Jammu and Kashmir governor says BDC elections will further boost developmental activities in rural areas of the state. And European Union postpones decision on length of Brexit delay until next week. Indian Administrative Service Officer Girish Chandra Murmu has been appointed as Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir and RK Mathur as Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh. An official statement released by the Rashtrapati Bhavan today said Mr. P. S. Sridharan Pillai has been appointed the new Governor of Mizoram. The incumbent Governor of the Jammu and Kashmir, Satyapal Malik, has been moved to Goa. While Murmu, a 1985 batch Gujarat cadre officer, is serving as the expenditure secretary in the Union Finance Ministry, Mathur, a 1977 batch officer, has served as the defense secretary and is a former chief information commissioner (CIC). The two union territories will come into existence on the 31st of October. Political activities for government formation have gained momentum in Haryana and Maharashtra after declaration of assembly poll results. The newly elected BJP Legislature Party of Haryana will meet in Chandigarh tomorrow to choose its leader. Briefing media in New Delhi today, party's state in charge Anil Jain said after the meeting, the party will meet the governor to stake claim for government formation in the state. He said Union Minister Nirmala Sita Raman and senior party leader Arun Singh will be the central observers at the meeting. कल विधानमंडल दल की बैठक है उसमें हमारी फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमण जी रहेंगी और हमारे जनरल सेक्रेटरी अरुण सिंह जी रहेंगे तब नेता का चयन होगा उसके बाद ही हम दावा प्रस्तुत करेंगे हरियाणा चीफ मिनिस्टर मनोहर लाल मेट बीजेपी वर्किंग प्रेसिडेंट जेपी नड्डा एंड अदर टॉप लीडर्स ऑफ द पार्टी इन द नेशनल कैपिटल टुडे टू डिस्कस अ वे फॉरवर्ड द रूलिंग बीजेपी हैज इमर्ज्ड एज द सिंगल लार्जेस्ट पार्टी विद 40 सीट्स इन द स्टेट असेंबली इलेक्शंस द बीजेपी इज सिक्स शॉर्ट ऑफ द हाफ वे मार्क इन द 90 मेंबर हरियाणा असेंबली Talking to reporters ahead of the meeting, Haryana chief said he is optimistic that the BJP is going to form the government in the state. The Congress won 31 seats, Jan Nayak Janata Party 10, Indian National Lok Dal and Haryana Lok Hit Party won each and seven winners are independents. Three newly elected independent MLAs of Haryana also met Mr. Nadda at his residence. The MLAs are Dharampal Gondar, Nayanpal Rawat and Sombir Sangwan. BJP leader Jawahar Yadav said the three MLAs have extended their support to the BJP. In a related development, Jananayak Janata Party chief Dushyant Chotala said his party is open to support any party which will go with JJP's common minimum program on Haryana. Briefing media in New Delhi, Mr. Chotala said JJP will support the party which will work for the welfare of youth and the senior citizens. 75 परसेंट हरियाणा के अंदर जो हरियाणवी का रोजगार का अधिकार का हमारा उद्देश्य था वृद्ध अवस्था पेंशन उसकी बढ़ोतरी इन विषयों पर जौन सा भी पोलिटिकल दल सहमत होगा जननायक जनता पार्टी पूरी तौर पर उसके साथ मिलकर सरकार बनाने का प्रयास करेगी On the other hand, senior Congress leader and former Haryana Chief Minister Bhupinder Singh Hooda is also in Delhi to explore the possibility of government formation. Congress leader and his son Dipinder Singh Hooda said the independent MLAs who are going to support the BJP are betraying the trust of the people of Haryana and they will never forgive them. Top Congress leaders also held meeting with party president Sonia Gandhi to deliberate upon the poll outcome in Haryana and Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, Shiv Sena President Uddhav Thackeray has called a meeting of newly elected MLAs of his party at his residence in Mumbai tomorrow. Shiv Sena, who fought assembly elections in Maharashtra in alliance with the BJP, is expected to drive a hard bargain for key portfolios. However, party stand has not been communicated yet. However, BJP National President Amit Shah and Shiv Sena chief will discuss the government formation talks 
post Diwali. In the 288th member Maharashtra Assembly, the BJP Shiv Sena combine has secured 161 seats, while Congress NCP Alliance bagged 98 seats. The remaining 29 seats have gone to smaller parties and independents. Meanwhile, State Congress President Balasab Thorat has ruled out joining hands with the Shiva Sena to keep the BJP out of power in the state. Addressing a press conference in Mumbai today, Mr. Thorat said, if the Sena approaches his party, then his unit will seek advice from the party's central leadership and its decision will be final. NCP Chief Sharad Pawar also ruled out any alliance with the Shiva Sena. He said that NCP Congress and other allies will decide together the future course of action. Mr. Pawar also stated that people have asked us to sit in the opposition. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our News on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. Army Chief General Bipin Rawat today said that Pakistan occupied Kashmir is actually controlled by terrorists. Speaking at an event in New Delhi, Army Chief said the complete state of Jammu and Kashmir includes POK and Gilgit Baltistan. General Rawat said POK and Gilgit Baltistan became an occupied territory, a territory which has been illegally occupied by India's western neighbor. The complete state of Jammu and Kashmir includes POK and Gilgit Baltistan. Therefore, POK and Gilgit Baltistan becomes an occupied territory, a territory which has been illegally occupied by our western neighbor. It is not controlled by the Pakistani establishment. It is controlled by terrorists. In Jammu and Kashmir, Farooq Khan, advisor to the governor, has said the successful conclusion of Block Development Council BDC elections in the state would help maintain a close monitoring of developmental works at planning and execution level. He expressed hope that the BDC elections will further boost developmental activities in rural areas of the state. The advisor made these remarks during interaction with a group of newly appointed BDC chairpersons in Srinagar today. Our correspondent has filed a report. Advisor Farooq Khan said that after conclusion of Block Development Council elections, Jammu and Kashmir would now receive additional funds from centre and the funding would help to give further boost to developmental activities in far-flung and rural areas. Meanwhile, in a major decision, the State Administrative Council, headed by Governor Satipal Malik, today accorded sanction to the unbundling of the Jammu and Kashmir Power Development Department, JNK State Power Development Corporation Limited and JNK State Power Trading Company Limited to be renamed as JNK State Power Trading Corporation Limited. Following the SAC approval, the functions, mandate and the jurisdiction of Jammu Kashmir Power Development Department will be divided between Union Territory of JNK and Union Territory of Ladakh. R.K. Raina, AR News, Jammu. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in his Man Ki Baat program on Sunday at 11 a.m., which also happens to be the Festival of Lights, Deepavali. In his last Man Ki Baat address, the Prime Minister urged people to celebrate Diwali in a safe manner to ensure use of firecrackers do not lead to incidents of fire or loss of lives. आप सबको विविधता से भरे हुए भारत के विविध त्योहारों की बहुत-बहुत शुभकामनाएं ये भी जरूर देखना कि दिवाली के दिनों में फटाके वगैरह से कहीं आग जनी कहीं किसी व्यक्ति का नुकसान न हो जाए इसके लिए जो भी अतराज बरतना चाहिए आप लोग जरूर बरतिए आइए मिलजुल करके उमंग से उत्साह से नए सपने नए संकल्प के साथ हम त्योहारों को भी मनाएं फिर एक बार बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं the festival of Dhanteras is being celebrated in different parts of the country today. Dhanteras is also known as Dhan Trayodashi or Dhanvantri Trayodashi. It is celebrated two days before Diwali. People consider this as an auspicious day to make new purchases, especially gold or silver articles and new utensils. In Uttar Pradesh, people are thronging markets to make new purchases. Our correspondent reports Dhanteras also marks the commencement of five-day-long Diwali festivities. We have a report. Markets all over the state are stocked with a variety of lights and candles, among other fancy items, and are ready to welcome shoppers for the festive time. People can be seen jostling in the market as there is a huge rush to make the last time purchase of gold, silver and utensils. Goddess Lakshmi and Kuber, the god of wealth and prosperity, are being worshipped today. The day is also being celebrated in the state as anniversary of Lord Dhanvantri, the father of Ayurveda, who was born with Amrit Kalash on the day of Dhanteras in Samudra Manthan. With Sushil Chandra Tiwari's report from Lucknow, this is Aditi Lumba for AIR News. 
in Gujarat, people can be seen making heavy purchases of appliances and automobiles. Our correspondent has the details. Dhan Teras is being celebrated as an auspicious day in Gujarat. Last minute's rush have been witnessed in beautifully decorated markets of Ahmedabad. Despite the inflated prices, people also made the purchase of gold to mark the festival of wealth and prosperity. Diwali is the biggest festival. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. The Prime Minister has greeted the nation on the auspicious occasion. In his tweet, Mr. Modi said, On the auspicious occasion of Dhanteras, heartiest greetings to the people. Arrangements are in full swing to celebrate the National Unity Day on the 31st of this month. Lakhs of people from more than 700 districts will take part in the events to be organized to commemorate the birth anniversary of Sadar Vallabhai Patel. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Kevadia in Gujarat to pay homage to the great leader at the Statue of Unity. Home Minister Amit Shah will flag off the commemorative run for unity from New Delhi's Major Dhyan Chand National Stadium at 7.10 a.m. on the 31st of October. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his Man Ki Baat address last year had urged the youths of the country to take part in the run for unity in largest possible numbers. Run for unity. Dorega India. Lakshya Ki Yo. Ek Bharat. Shrest Bharat. As the nation is celebrating the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, the News Services Division NSD of All India Radio continues to remind people of the lofty ideals and basic values of humanity advocated by the father of the nation. Taking forward the idea, Principal Director General of NSD Ira Joshi released the 8th edition of the in-house magazine Akashwani Samachar Bharati at NSD headquarters in New Delhi today. In Maharashtra, cyclonic storm Kyar may unleash strong winds, heavy rains in Mumbai and surrounding Konkan region. Indian Meteorological Department IMD said a deep depression in the Arabian Sea intensified into cyclonic storm Kyar during early hours today and is likely to turn into a very severe one during the subsequent 24 hours. The Met Department official said the cyclonic storm is likely to bring very heavy to extremely heavy rains in coastal districts of Ratnagiri and Sindhudurg in the next 12 hours. Former Gujarat Chief Minister Dilip Parikh passed away in Ahmedabad today following a prolonged illness. He was 82. He served as the 13th Chief Minister of Gujarat during 1997-98. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his grief over the demise of former Gujarat Chief Minister. The Central Bureau of Investigation moved the Supreme Court today, seeking review of its verdict granting bail to former Finance Minister and Congress Leader P. Chidambaram in the INX media corruption case. The CBI said some errors apparent on record have crept into the 22nd October verdict. The top court had granted bail to the Congress leader in the case lodged by the CBI. Chidambaram is currently in custody of the Enforcement Directorate till the 30th of October in the money laundering case related to INX media scam. European Union ambassadors postponed a decision on how long to delay Britain's exit from the bloc until next week. Diplomats states this after talks in Brussels. The 27 member states agreed in principle that Brexit should be delayed beyond the end of the month, but talks are ongoing about how much longer to wait. The ambassadors agreed that the decisions could be made by written procedure rather than an emergency leader summit, but their next meeting is going to be early next week. Talking to reporters, European Commission spokesman Mina Andriva said the work will continue in the coming days. In badminton, Sana Nehwal bowed out of the French Open today. The 29-year-old lost to Korea's An se Jung in the women's singles quarterfinals. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Girish Chandra Murmu appointed as Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir and R.K. Mathur as Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh. Satyapal Malik to be the new Goa governor. Political activities for government formation gain momentum in Haryana and Maharashtra. Haryana BJP Legislature Party to meet in Chandigarh tomorrow to elect its leader. Army Chief Bipin Rawat asserts POK illegally occupied by Pakistan but actually controlled by terrorists. Advisor to Jammu and Kashmir Governor says BDC elections will further boost developmental activities in rural areas of the state. And European Union postpones decision on length of Brexit delay until next week. And that's all in the news at 9. Good night.